To the Hawford family, I extend my sincere condolences. May God in his mercy be with you at this time as you experience. Loss and to other members gathered, we share the I would also like to thank all those not here today for the outpouring of sympathy reported on the radio, television, press, and the many WhatsApps, emails, and calls received. We are deeply touched. On behalf of the family, I would like to thank the care caregivers, Indra, who has looked after him and his household for over 40 years, and Roberta and Mary, who saw him through the last difficult months. Richard Edwin Joseph was born on the 5th of April, 1944, and passed just two weeks before his 80th birthday. He was born in Trinidad and lived in St. Anne's, where as young boys, we interacted with the youth in that region. At the age of 12, our father was transferred to Guyana, where we lived for six years. Richard loved Guyana and would revisit it many times in later years. He went to the Jesuit school St. Stanislaus College but excelled in outdoor activities, playing rugby and trekking into the interior. He and a group of friends even went overland to Kayacho Falls, traveling by boat from Georgetown to Bartica, and from there on the back of a truck as far as it could go. Thereafter, he walked and traveled in canoes until they reached the falls. A couple of years in the aforementioned activities decided he wanted to go to Canada. While he awaited his visa, he traveled to St. Vincent and worked at the port where new steel sheds were being erected and took up a job painting these structures. In Canada, he worked at a motor car tire factory as a shop window assistant 
and Ian and even mowing loans. He had a preference for Montreal and shortly afterwards left Ontario and got a job with Sun Life Insurance Company in the computer department. He was there during the Olympics and is in his small apartment accommodated many Trinidadians coming to Montreal for the occasion. He developed close friends in Montreal. Charles Sorau and Dick Lopes come to mind and went hunting for moose and fishing in the lakes. He was thrilled to be able to see his good friend from Trinidad, Roger Gibbon, win gold in cycling in the Olympics. This solidified an already strong friendship which would endure until today. He had a friend, Wilfred de Freitas, whom he had known being a neighbor in Trinidad. Wilfred had gone off on an African safari and recounted exciting tales which caused Richard to decide that he too will go on an African safari. He left Montreal, arrived in Trinidad as the first step of his African tour, knapsack on back and long hippie hair. It was the year of the polio epidemic when they had numerous restrictions and carnival was deferred to May. With, with time on his hands, he joined with Roger Gibbon, Vernon Charles, and others, and formed Mario's Pizzeria in Val Park, which he was to run. After a couple of years, the other investors sold out to Richard, and he carried on the business. Things looked up after a while, in spite of many previous challenges. I have a vivid image of my brother coming down Charlotte Street carrying a bag of flour on his back. Another memory is that cheese was in short supply. He flew to Grenada, bought stock, placed it on a schooner, and came down on the schooner with the cheese to make sure Mario continued to run. This dedication, grit, and hard work was to lead to the expansion of Mario's, where they have 22 stores throughout Trinidad and are the dominant pizza supplier in the country. He married Rosette and had four children, Natalie, Roger, Ryan, and Randall. He was a very dedicated family man a value instilled by his father, Raymond, that family come first. His grandchildren was his great love, and he would often speak of them in loving terms. The company prospered, and he was silently a very generous man. His staff loved him, and I repeat, his staff loved him. He looked after many traumas in their lives that they could not meet, burying their fathers and mothers, paying for urgent medical operations, and sending children and grandchildren to school. There was more than one member who was totally dedicated to him and wanted to change their name to Harford. The painter Neves and the mechanic Small, who looked after all the ovens, come to mind. He built a significant business. He led not a workplace, but a large family. He was a tower of strength. Workers identified with the inspirational leadership and knew unquestionably that they could depend on him when challenges sought to overcome them. His smile, his kindness, 
his integrity and loyalty endeared, endeared him to a cadre of friends, many of whom can be found at the Clydesdale Watering Hole. He continued with what he considered a full life, traveling the world and a close bonding with his dear friends, Winfield Allion, Johnny Carpenter, Randall Roach, Gregory Hannes, Roy Peake, and of course, Roger Gibbon, among others. His relationship with me, his brother, and his sisters, Jacqueline and Helen, was one of pure love and caring. We are very proud of our brother who lives before you, what he has achieved, and the memories he leaves us. May his soul rest in peace. Thank you. As certain as the sun rising every morning, a new reality is upon us now to which we must abide. We are comforted in knowing that you'll be watching over us, guiding us through the difficult but true road ahead, blurring the lines between our reality and your new paradise. These words were penned nearly six years ago and spoken nearly six years ago. When questioned on possible early retirement, Pope Francis responded, I believe the Pope's ministry is ad fitum for life. This Latin phrase, ad vitam, for life, meaning for life, encap encapsulates the essence of Richard in whatever he chose to do and whatever God gave him to do. These were his dedications and commitments, and they were for life, without hesitation, without question, and certainly without concern for opinions. An aspect of Richard's life that shone through and I personally admired was his enduring friendships. They were for life. It was remarkable to witness the strength of these friendships. They never faltered with the triviality of time, separation, or absence. The breadth of these personalities represented Richard's vitality and were a consistent thread through his life. Richard's life experiences were that of 10 men. He did it all and he saw it all. The stories are well known. But there's one place that, when, that brought about the childlike exuberance in him once mentioned. That is the grasslands of the Rupununi in Guyana. This is where Richard lived the fiction that he read in Wilbur Smith's novels. This was his dreamland. I had the opportunity to visit this place, and on that small hill, with the wind rolling through the massive mango tree, overlooking the vistas, he collected fruit to his heart's desire. It was to witness pure contentment. Richard was a man of self-determination. He made it clear that he will meet death on his own terms. His last acts in the face of deep adversity, including building the strength to attain, attend the 80th birthday of his lifelong friend, Roger Gibbon, with just two weeks to go. Sorry, which was just two weeks ago, because this is a promise that he made. After which, he went home and quietly picked out a black suit and hung it next to his bed. He then afforded Ryan and John enough time to return home, and he waited. He waited for his final act of self-determination. Having passed away at 25 past midnight, Richard ensured that when the sun crested the hills of Grand Couver on that morning, it revealed the magnificence of the mighty motel and the pink and yellow pui in bloom. Although difficult to concisely articulate, we must acknowledge and confer gratitude for the care, strength, protection, and concern given to Richard, not solely, but in particularly the last few years. 
by Natalie Hoffman, Angel Mirage, and Dr. Maria Bartholomew. The wind will continue to roll through the salmon trees in Grand Coover and at that mango tree at the surveyor's marker 507 in the Rupununi, as it does. We thank everyone for taking the time to pay their respects to Richard Arthur. Grandpa of mine, in the halls of memory, your spirit lives, guiding me with values, the light you give. Humility, honesty, integrity, generosity, kindness, love, each lesson shines in my heart forever entwined. Your handshake, a symbol of never ending in a sequence so tight. The playful punch, an expression of joy. In those moments, lessons for a boy. Apple dapple, grandpa, your words of excitement. You're in heaven with the angels and granny. Your humor, an inspiration in life's dark. A joyful spark, leaving your mark. At birthdays and gatherings, present Christ. With warmth and love, never to be replaced. Though you should be on the outside, the spirit remains for guide. Your, your legacy lives with gratitude. Your legacy lives with gratitude and love. The precious moments with more than gold. In every tear shared, your wisdom shines, guiding me through life's winding lines. Though you're gone, your love abides in every step by my side. Forever in my heart you reside. As I journey on, following in your footsteps, and honor your name as mine, and lessons you taught me with you as my guide. Here's to you, dear grandpa of mine. Let us pray. O oh God, whose nature is always to forgive and show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant Richard Harford, whom you've called this day to journey to you. And since he hoped and believed in you, grant that he may be led to our true homeland to delight in its everlasting joys. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Please be seated for the readings. reading from the Book of Wisdom. The virtuous man, though he died before his time, will find rest. Length of his days is not what makes age honorable, nor the number seduce his soul for the fascination of evil throws good things into the shade and the whirlwind of desire corrupts a simple heart coming to perfection in social
for a while await the chosen of the Lord and protection his holy ones. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will come to you in the silence. with you and with your spirit a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew and Jesus said to his disciples when the Son of Man comes in his glory escorted by all the angels then he will take his seat on his throne of glory all the nations will be assembled before him and he will separate men one from another as the shepherd separates the sheep from goats. He will place the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. And then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you whom my father has blessed, take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. 
For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you made me welcome. Naked, and you clothed me. Sick, and you visited me. In prison, and you came to see me. Then the virtuous will say to him in reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and make you welcome, naked and clothe you, sick or in prison and go to see you? And the king will answer, I tell you solemnly, in so far as you did this to the one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it to me. Next, he will say to those on his left hand, go away from me with your curse upon you to the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. But I was hungry, and you never gave me food. I was thirsty, and you never gave me anything to drink. I was a stranger, and you never made me welcome, naked, and never clothed me, sick and in prison, and you never visited me. Then it will be their turn to ask, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, a stranger or naked, sick or in prison, and did not come to your help? And then he will answer, I tell you solemnly, in so far as you neglected to do this to one of the least of these, you neglected to do it to me. And they will go away to eternal punishment, and the virtuous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. The legacies we leave behind are not those of material or financial worth, but a legacy of our humanity, how we impacted the lives of others on earth. What did we do to the least among us? I want to invite persons who may be standing to the back, their seats to the front. You may be seated and their seats on that side, as well as there are, there's room upstairs if you wish. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, what will be our response? What will be the legacy that we would have left behind? Was it one where we fed the hungry, gave drink to the thirsty, made a stranger welcome, clothed those who were naked, visit questions that God asks of us. We live in a very, what we call now, transactional society, where one offers something in return for something. And that somehow has take no way our humanity. We've begun to see human beings simply as persons through whose work or labor or intelligence as a mean of exploitation. We have stopped seeing the persons providing the service to us. 
We've stopped seeing their gift, their talent, as something that God had allowed them to develop and bring into a way of assisting others. The gospel, Jesus asked, when? When? And if we are unable to think of a time when, God still gives us an opportunity to do it for someone else, to begin anew, to see the human in each other. His grandson spoke of a legacy that he will carry, a legacy imprinted in his heart, a legacy that invites him to see the world differently. And that's because of his grandfather. That's because life and what one can do as a sign of thanksgiving is probably to see in ourselves and see in each other our humanity again we've lived lives so separated compartmental one's legacy of finance but one's legacy of love and to say to our grandchildren I love you I love you we are witnessing a separation in the minds of some of our young men because they are engaging in life is decisions that aren't in their interest. If someone takes up a firearm to kill someone, it suggests to me that someone in their life had not allowed them to experience love in the way that they needed it. So that they in turn can go out and injure another. But if I've experienced love, real love, I can't injure another. Our young people are into vaping and different types of drugs as an, a way of, esca of escaping what they think is their reality. And that may be as a result of being, not being loved in the way they needed in the way they needed. Not that their parents aren't loving them, but in the way they need it. And sometimes we have to move to approach our young people from where they're at. Not where we are from, where they're at. And speak to them in a way that touches their very being. for them and love is not pacifying 
Love can be tough at times, but love must be constant, constant. We live in a society now where our young people aren't receiving love constantly. And this is where grandparents come in. You may have the time to pick up the phone and say, Jonathan, Granny loves you. But someone in their life loves them. In so far that you neglected to do this to the least of my brothers, you neglected to do it to me. And I want to suggest we simply need to add to this list to love. Because we're in a society where we're seeing the signs not only of broken families and broken relationships, but now broken lives. Our young people, the rate of suicide among our young people is now increasing. And yes, we can say it may be as a result of the new technology. But part of it is also because we've not made the time we are busy doing other things and not making the time to say, I love you. It may not have to be in those words. For persons or grandparents age, they didn't say it, but they communicated it. They allowed us to understand in a real way that whatever your parents are doing or not doing, they loved us. And somehow we must find that way again for this generation to imprint in their hearts this sense that they are loved. And they don't need the devices, nor the drugs, nor the crime. Because a life of crime is futile. does not make sense to me. So we have to find a way of touching them where they are, not where we prison ministry teaches one so much. And years ago, I was at YTC working with some young men. And these are good young men in themselves. But they've made mistakes. And somehow we have to find a way again of touching them and touching their hearts before they make mistakes. To let them know that they are loved. And let them know that they can experience the love of someone in their lives who cares. Life is not only transactional. We are all called to be human. And as we bury our brother, we allow the memory of the eulogy of his grandson to speak again and that we may allow ourselves to touch the hearts of others.
If you will stand for a moment, we will have the general intercessions. God the Almighty Father, raise Christ his Son from the dead. With confidence, we are... ...ask him to save all his people, living and dead. ...the of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day. Lord, hear us. For our deceased... times. We pray for the Pope, our Archbishop, priests and religious leaders, that you will strengthen and guide them as they will become better servants answering to your call. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously. Eternal Father, we pray that Uncle Richard will be reunited in your heavenly kingdom with our Aunt Rosat. May they continue to look down on our family and keep us protected with their love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption.
and fill me with your love. Sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Richard Harford, beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge, lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man, he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so, in the company of the choirs of angels, we praise you. And with joy, we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You're indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so to become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat from it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Please kneel or be seated. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which is poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partake of the body and blood of Christ be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Jason our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Richard Harford, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Granted he was united with your son in a death like his, 
may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, bless Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And on earth, as it is our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in all day that by the help of your mercy be free from sin and safe from all distress as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away our sin and the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
of you is forever to remember me as loving you. All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. Deep the joy of being together in one heart and for me that's just where it is. All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. As we make our way through all the joys and pains, can we sense a younger, truer selves? All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. Someone will be calling you to be there for a while. Can you hear the cry from deep within? All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. Laughter, joy, and presence only gifts you are. Have you time? I'd like to be with you. All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. Persons come into the fiber of our lives and then their shadow fades and disappears. All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. Deep the joy of being together in one. That's just where it
be strengthened by it and come to the eternal table in Christ, who is and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. My dear friends, we now come to the final commendation. into his heavenly embrace. To you, Lord, we commend this soul, Richard, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now dead. In your sight, may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant him everlasting peace. This we ask through Christ our Lord. from this life to himself, we commit his body to the elements, for we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. Jesus Christ will change your mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he's risen the firstborn from the dead. Let us commend our brother to the Lord. 
the Lord may embrace him in peace and raise up his body on the last day. I invite you now to stand and bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful and you attend to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry to in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine. May the peace of God, which is beyond understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, of the Son, O Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you, dear friends, to extend your right hand to the casket, the coffin that carries the body of Richard. Richard Harford. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and lead you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. And may the choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find eternal rest. There were beggars and kings in a magical sky There were winds in the air and they learned how to fly There was me, there was you in a world made for two Then you were gone Let me say 